Valorant is a game. When I It's competitive, relies on mechanical skill, and is unfortunately filled with e-gators. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm on a mission to get this little menace named Maple a big backyard, so subscribe. Valentine's Day was a couple weeks ago, and the official Valorant Twitter account was posting a lot of garbage regarding e-dating, as you can see here. Yeah, you could say it's to drive sales for their Valentine's bundle, but they actively promote e-dating, as you can see from this video on their official TikTok. We're a Valorant duo. When you say five minutes, it takes one hour minimum. We're a Valorant duo. You always insta-log and I always fall. We're a Valorant duo. One time you roasted me thinking I was a random teammate. Wait, that was you? We're a Valorant duo. We match names and player cards. We're a Valorant duo. If you heal someone before me, it's over. Well, if you buy someone else before me, it's over. We're a Valorant duo. I'm the better one. No, I'm the better one. What the fuck is this piece of shit? They've been targeting this audience to have in their game for quite some time now, and I don't understand what they hope to gain from being the FPS genre's Tinder. The game has an esports scene, and for those trying to go pro in the game, imagine getting into a game with e-daters and they throw your game. I've had it happen to me in NA and in Europe. I currently live in Germany, but I'm from the US. And every time they get in my game, it's the most toxic lobby ever. It usually consists of both teams ganging up on the e-couple because the Sage is holding heel and res only for the bottom frag Reyna who's shit-talking everyone because of their massive ego. And on top of that, they have some cringe names. So, yeah. I understand Riot is trying to have the game be a place for everyone to come in and feel safe, quote-unquote, within gaming, but it makes it significantly more toxic that way. NA is not as bad as Europe, but over here we get people hating on Turks because they're Turkish and Brits being jackasses to me because I'm American. Like, my bad bro, I didn't know I could select where I'd be born. And a whole lot of other stuff. Riot having open arms to everyone makes things far more toxic than they realize. In fact, the toxicity of Valorant is one of the reasons why I moved to CS. Yeah, the irony, I know. But at least in CS, all I have is some Russian screaming some crazy ass words to me that I don't understand and not some e-couples throwing my games because I asked for a heal or I wouldn't drop them a skin that I have. Oh my, mommy, I need a heal. <laughs> oh. Come here, heal, come here. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. Plus, Riot catering and providing a platform to e-daters doesn't make sense to me. Their community is literally telling them what they want and they don't listen. Instead, they bring out a pack for e-daters who won't buy because one is usually a smurf. Instead of delivering a replay system, their community is dying for. Literally, every community post of theirs on YouTube is filled with comments about a replay system. Riot needs to figure out the correct audience for their game and fast. Maybe promote more swift play and unrank to the e-daters and let comp be for those who want to grind the ranks, claim the ladder, and improve. But on the other side of the coin, the toxic e-daters ruin it for couples who've been together for a while and are just playing the game. Here's an example. Pause to read. Not only do they ruin the game's balance, fun, and make it toxic, but they ruin it for others who are genuinely in a relationship just trying to play the game together and rank up. Plus, how does a clip like this help bring more people into the game and make them want to play it? For every kill you get, I'll give you an ooh. -ooh. <laughs> Alright, bet. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Aw, you're adorable. <laughs> ooh. <-woo. laughs> ooh. <-woo. laughs> ooh. <-woo. laughs> oh my god, that is so adorable. Oh, a niece. Ooh. -woo. Thank or videos like this one with over a million views, mind you. Valorant used to be known as CSGO's killer, but it's quickly devolved into an e-dater's paradise. And when you look at a game like Overwatch 2, they don't have this problem. Sure, they might put out the occasional e-dater tweet, but they don't promote themselves as the FPS scene's Tinder. And some of the comments from this post are actually wholesome, like these two. Plus, Overwatch players are some of the biggest horn dogs known to Earth. One read-through of the first couple of pages of Steam reviews will tell you as much. And it begs the question. What does Riot hope to gain from this? Surely they understand they won't be able to sustain their game in esports scene if the game is filled with e-daters with no aspirations of going pro because they're too worried about boosting their e-partner and still only dropping 12 kills. 
And to make matters worse, you can hear them flirting in game chat versus Discord. No joke, I wish I had the clip, but my sister-in-law streams, catch her at twitch.tv slash moj, and she ran into an e-couple who were literally barking at each other in voice chat. Barking. Not talking. Barking. Hey, hey, girl. come on, Jenna, go. Let's go. Bad girl, let's go. Anyways, eat haters clog up comms and get mad when you tell them to be quiet so you can hear calls or give calls. But riot promoting this behavior also allows people to harass others. Now, don't get this twisted. I'm not saying Riot is allowing females to get harassed, but when you promote e-dating within your game, you're bound to have people come into the community and be creepy or weird. All this leads to is them harassing girls, making the game even more toxic because if others see one person doing it, they either join in with them or tell them to stop and get told they're a white knight or something. Not only that, but e-daters are toxic to other e-daters too. I watched a video way back. I wish I had the clip. But it was about how e-daters are toxic to a guy who talks to a duo sage and how they get super jealous because they responded. Insecurities are on another level with these people. And yeah, you could say, oh, but it's not very often that it happens or it's not that bad or whatever. And I won't say you're wrong, but a vast majority of the games you play in Valorant won't have toxic e-couples running around and ruining the game. But that doesn't subtract the fact that they ruin the experience and give Valorant a bad look, especially when Riot is promoting it themselves. Every time I had e-daters in my games, I immediately get out after finishing it because it takes significantly more bandwidth not to lose my shit at two jackasses during the game. It may not happen often, but when it does, it's shit every time. But again, the question remains, what does Riot hope to gain from this? What's the end goal? If someone from Riot sees this, please DM me on Discord because I'd love to talk to you about this in more detail and understand why Riot is choosing to promote Valorant as the FPS genre's Tinder rather than a competitive FPS for people to be, get better in. Surely they can't believe they'll hold on to the player base this way, especially if they got some toxic e-couple ruining people's games every game. The players will start to leave and not come back because why would they want to be at the mercy of some insta-lock jet and sage? I truly don't under understand the end goal here, but maybe it's because I'm an outsider looking in. If you have any idea or have any reason why you think they promote e-dating within their game, please share it down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for Maple. Peace. Did we win? No! Uh, bro? What was that? What was that noise? What's, what's your problem, bro? First round. Yeah, what's your problem?